What's up? So by now you've already heard about Wednesday's debate and how a certain candidate who will remain nameless <laughs> Romney wants to cut funding to the PBS if he's president. Now I rarely get involved in politics, but before you all start thinking I'm going to be all flag waving happy here, I not only wave the American flag, I also wave the Canadian and of course the all skull and crossbones. Back to the topic of Romney's PBS comment, it seems that Romney just cannot keep his mouth shut because every time he opens his mouth, he always inserts his own foot into it. His latest comment about PBS just comes a week later after his now famous comment about why airplane windows do not open. It's very simple, Romney, why airplane windows do not open. Have you ever heard of something called sudden decompression? But by all means, the next time you are on an airplane, feel free to open up a window and please let us all know how that works out for you. Getting back to Romney's PBS comment now, Romney, it just seems, is just plain, ordinary, stupid. Now, those are just my opinion, but I'm pretty sure that half the U.S. and the world would agree with me as well. Romney needs to seriously rethink about cutting funds to the PBS. Because if he cancels Sesame Street, he won't stop at children's programming. No, he'll go after programs such as Masterpiece Theater, Mystery, and of course, the beloved Britcoms. If Romney gets elected presidency, God forbid though, but if he does, by some moronic, you know, whatever, but if he gets rid of my Britcoms, I will seriously go on the warpath and that Romney will be responsible for World War III. To end this video on a high note, today marks 50 years that this phrase was first uttered. I admire your luck, Mr. Bond. James Bond. For 50 years, James Bond and all of his incarnations have been saving the world, getting the girls, and showing us that martinis are always best shaken, not stirred. In 1962, Dr. No was the first James Bond film. But, oddly enough, it wasn't the first Bond novel. The first Bond novel was Casino Royale in 1953, and Dr. No was the sixth novel in 1958. Sean Connery, without any argument, is the one and only James Bond. But when casting Dr. No, such actors as Cary Grant, Patrick McGowan, Roger Moore, and even David Niven were up for the coveted part. Composers Monty Norman and John Barry are responsible for giving James Bond his signature tune, which was originally written for a musical called A House for Mrs. Biz Walls. Happy 50th, Mr. Bond.